Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the top five best fish for a 20 gallon tank. Now, when I'm talking about a 20 gallon tank, this is normally gonna be like a beginner tank. So 20 gallon tanks, a two foot tank. This is a pretty common size. It's probably the second most common after a 10 gallon, which is normally everyone's beginner tank. And I think that 20 gallon tanks are probably one of the best tanks that you can keep as a hobbyist in pretty much the whole hobby because I use a lot of 20 gallon tanks for breeding my fish, but they're also really good for making small display tanks that you can fit anywhere in your home and they're going to be a little bit more stable than a 10 gallon tank because there's a larger volume of water without taking up like a huge amount of space and in my opinion I'd always recommend using a 20 gallon tank over a 10 gallon tank as a beginner just because you're going to have a little bit more consistency and you can keep a larger variety of things in that tank. Now before we get into this list I just want to quickly say that all of these fish are just like my opinion and these are all just based off of my experiences so you know I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel don't take all this stuff to heart and these are just going to be things that I'd recommend to keep in a 20 gallon tank if I was possibly a beginner or an intermediate Aquarius. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now these fish aren't in any particular order. These are all just gonna be like fish that I'd keep in a 20 gallon tank. So there's not gonna be like a specific order of best to worst. So with that being said, the first fish on my list is gonna be a bristle nose. So a 20 gallon tank is definitely big enough to keep a bristle nose. You can probably keep actually a couple of bristle nose in your tank. And these guys are gonna be really good to help clean up extra food in your tank. They're also gonna be really good for eating a lot of diatom algae, which grows on the surface of things in your aquarium. So like on the glass, that green sludge, they definitely eat that stuff and they really help to keep the glass of the aquarium clean and to help keep ornaments and stuff like that clean. Now these guys do create a lot of waste. They're a catfish, so they're constantly pooping and you will need to make sure that you have a lot of plants in that aquarium to help absorb all those nutrients and you will have to suck up all of that poop probably like weekly and try and keep the aquarium as clean as possible. But in my opinion, they actually positively help an aquarium more than they do negatively with their waste production because they do eat a lot of the food that falls to the bottom of the tank and help to clean that up. But a lot of people think that's just enough for these guys to survive and it's definitely not. That's just extra for them to eat during the week. They shouldn't be living off of extra food in your aquarium. When you're keeping these guys, you definitely will need to add some kind of extra food to the tank, whether it be like algae wafers or zucchini on a fork, like sunk down to the bottom of the tank or some kind of green beans. I'd recommend feeding a variety of those things. And I'd definitely recommend keeping some kind of driftwood in that tank because they will rasp on that driftwood and slowly gnaw away at it and eat all the biofilm that forms on that. So. These guys are really good. I'd recommend getting some smaller ones and growing them out. And eventually you might get a male and a female. And if you add a cave to the aquarium, they'll breed and they're really easy to breed and really fun to watch breed as well. So these guys are super popular. You can get a bunch of different types depending on how much you want to spend. So there's common ones, there's albino ones, there's super reds, there's long fins, there's you know blue-eyed lemon ones. There's a whole different variety of things. And if you want to get a little bit fancy with it, you can definitely go ahead and get some really cool ones like peppermint bristle nose, which are going to cost you a little bit more. But I think if you want to try and experiment with different things, it's definitely worth it. Okay, and so the number two species on my list is gonna be Corydoras. Now, Corydoras are a catfish that stays along the bottom of the aquarium and sits through the substrate and eats out little particles inside of the substrate, like through the sand, and will for the most part stay on the bottom of the aquarium. Now, these guys might shoot up to the top and have a gulp of air every now and then, but these guys are a bottom-dwelling fish and they are super, super cute. Now, I'd recommend a few different types of Corydoras. I'd recommend the smaller species and some of the cooler ones. Like, although you can keep albinos and bronze, I'd definitely try and keep something maybe a little bit more cool. Something like a panda cory is really cool, or even like if you can get your hands on them, some similis. If you do have a bit of a larger budget, one of the ones I do like a lot is the gold laser cory. These guys are actually really, really cool. These guys, you will need to make sure that they do get enough food down the bottom. And you're not gonna wanna keep one or two of these. You wanna get like a group of at least six because they are a schooling fish. So they'll feel a lot more comfortable in a school and they won't feel as shy and they won't hide as much but adding some hiding spaces to the aquarium really does help them out so some pieces of driftwood that they can safely hide under without you know getting crushed by that driftwood if it falls or something like that really will help them a lot and if you can add some blood worms to the aquarium and get those to sink down to the bottom they'll really appreciate that they're like a big high protein diet and these guys will breed if you do have them in an aquarium by themselves you'll see the eggs in and around the aquarium if you have them in a community tank they probably will breed but the eggs will get eaten straight away so i do breed a lot of these guys like i said i'd recommend probably that panda cory at number one that's going to be like a medium price one probably like around 10 bucks each and then maybe if you don't have that budget go for like something like an albino which is going to be like five bucks each and if you really want to spend some money get some of those really cool gold laser ones which are about 35 bucks each 
And then number three on my list is gonna be Danios. Now, when I'm talking about Danios, I'm talking about pretty much every kind of Danio in the aquarium hobby, whether that be Leopard Danios or Zebra Danios, or even like the cool Celestial Pearl Danios, which are actually Micro Rasboras. I'd recommend pretty much any of these guys. I wanted to clump them all together because they can be really, really good for a 20 gallon tank. They're gonna be around that mid level in the tank towards the top of the tank. But these guys are really cool if you can get a decent sized school, maybe like, you know, five to 10 of them and you're gonna watch them parade around the aquarium and these guys are really, really fun to feed when they do feed, especially like zebra danios go absolutely crazy for the food and it's just like, you know, a massive swarm around a bunch of flakes. But these guys can be really good for someone who's trying to make a beautiful display with a bunch of plants. Watching these guys go around the aquarium as a school is absolutely awesome and definitely something I'd recommend for a 20 gallon tank if you don't wanna have something like a Corydoras or a Bristlenose in that tank and you wanna have some kind of schooling fish, I'd definitely go for danios. So. My picks would be, if you don't want to spend too much and you want something that's pretty common, is Zebra Danios. You can get long fin ones or you can just get short fin ones. These guys also come as Leopard Danios. If you don't want those, I definitely recommend getting something like a Micro Rasbora. So something like a Celestial Pearl Danio, I really enjoy keeping those. And these guys, if you're up for a challenge, you can definitely breed them if you have the right setup. I've made a lot of videos on that. So number three on the list is Danios. Now the final two species on this list are pretty similar but both have kind of different behaviours and these are going to be something that I'd recommend for someone who's maybe not a beginner, maybe someone who's a bit of an intermediate aquarist and someone who's kept you know a few fish in their time. And with both of these fish you're definitely going to need to get them from good sources and make sure that they don't come in with problems because these two fish can commonly have a lot of issues. But the fourth fish on this list is going to be rams. Now I keep a lot of rams. I keep black rams and I keep blue rams. There's also gold rams. There's also electric blue rams. There's a whole bunch of different types of rams that you can get in the aquarium hobby. Now these guys are an absolutely amazing fish to keep in a 20 gallon tank. They're really going to feel comfortable in there. If you get a pair, they're probably going to breed. And these guys are a really good like centerpiece fish. So they're going to be the star of the show in that tank. You can have them with Corydoras. You can have them with schooling fish. And they're going to be basically the main thing in that aquarium. And they're going to go around the aquarium. They're going to pick sites to spawn in. They're going to eat together. They're just a really, really cool fish to keep. And the most important thing with rams is making sure that you get them from a really high quality source. So if you can get some local bred ones, they're going to be a whole lot better than imported ones that have like sunken in bellies and things like that. These guys do cost a little bit more. So they're going to be like a medium priced fish depending on what you get but a blue ram is probably going to cost you like 15 bucks to 20 bucks each and if you get two of them that's going to set you back obviously like about 40 bucks but it's definitely worth it if you want to create like a centerpiece in that tank and these guys just look absolutely phenomenal so number four on my list is going to be rams and that brings me to number one on the list which is going to be epistogrammas and when i say epistogrammas i'm pretty much talking about any species of epistogramma in the hobby i personally keep at the moment the fire gold epistogrammas which are a little bit rare in my area and can cost quite a bit more money but they look absolutely phenomenal these guys really do appreciate a soft water aquarium with a lot of like leaf litter in there but these are very very similar to the rams where they're going to be like a centerpiece if you add a coconut cave to the aquarium these guys will probably go in there and breed for you and i think a 20 gallon tank for both of these species the rams and the epistogrammas is definitely the ideal size for them a lot of people keep them in a 10 gallon tank but i just personally think that the 20 gallon tank is a lot better of a size it gives them a lot more room to go around they feel a lot more comfortable and you can keep these guys with a bunch of other species like you can keep them with the corydoras the bristlenose, the danios, and the funny thing about this list is you could actually keep all of these fish together. So that's why I made this list the way I made it. The only thing I wouldn't recommend keeping together is maybe the epistogrammas and the rams together. That's why I clumped them together at the end. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys appreciated my opinion on what I would keep in a 20 gallon tank. And like I said, just take it with a grain of salt. Everyone's gonna have different opinions and different lists. And this is just what I'd personally recommend to keep. So thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you in the next one.